Hey, welcome back. And welcome back to what? Welcome back to Turtle Mountain. It's been a minute since I've been up here. In fact, I haven't been up here this year at all. And usually I get a ride in the spring and another one in the fall. And so this is really just the fall run and I missed the spring one. And what is Turtle Mountain? Well, most of the locals will know what it is. And what you see is what you get. It's double track, Jeep trail basically with lots of rocks, lots of roots, and quite a bit of water with a nice view at the end. So on this trip today, it's going to be Hugo, Mark, Justin, and Leah, and myself, and we're going to have a pretty good run. Hugo had organized this ride by posting up that he was riding Turtle Mountain and had put out a general invite for everyone to come. So, not having another plan, this looked like a good one to me, and I threw my helmet in the ring and away we went. Alright, the gang's all here, so we'll keep going. This first section of Turtle Mountain kind of goes up on a steady incline, lots of rocks, and it's a good spot to train to have good body position, because if you don't have good body position, you're going to end up leaning back on your arms, and you're going to get wicked arm pump really fast. The other good thing about Turtle Mountain is all these rocks and roots help you set up your suspension because there are sections where you can go fairly fast, but there's also sections where you're kind of banging over some really rough, slick roots and you need your suspension to be pretty compliant. I mentioned that there's usually quite a bit of water here. This is a little bit more than normal, but it's the time of the year. We've had some rains uh, in the last couple of weeks, and the water tends to pool up and stay right here on the trail. And everything off to the side of the trail is rough, rocky, or muddy. Here comes Hugo on his KTM 500, a bike that's near and dear to my heart because I used to have one and I love that bike. Here's also Justin on what I think is a Honda 300 which has a fairly soft suspension so not bad for this stuff but I think it might be a bit more challenging to go fast on it. That said, Justin has no problem riding this bike through here. Mm. Alright, let's keep moving. We got some more rocks here and then we're going to get into section that's got quite a bit of roots but we got to get through a bit more water yet. I should probably mention that Hugo's already got his video up so I will put his name in here. I haven't figured out how to actually link to a video so uh, you'll just have to search his name on YouTube but his video shows another perspective of this exact ride and uh, one of the things it shows is a little confusion on the front part on my behalf because I thought he had asked me to lead the ride and in fact he said I'll lead and then I went blasting out ahead, ran through some puddles and splashed him quite a bit very early on the ride. <laughs> Sorry about that Hugo. That might scare a few people off, but it'll make for good video too. Yep. I loved my 500 in here, it just soaks everything up and rolls over everything. Uh, a little oh, walk through memory lane, and then the hopes that we might get some good inspirational <laughs> video. Uh, but Justin wasn't going to have any of that, and he took Leah and Mark around on a okay. bypass, and you and I went without video. So, uh, you know what, if this isn't exciting, blame them. <laughs> You haven't met Leah and Mark in this video just yet, so here they are. There's Leah directly in front of me on her beta, and Mark on his just to the right. Uh, we'll get more of Mark in a minute, but uh, I was going to pass Leah there. She just shut the door on me, and that's just how it is. She's an aggressive rider. She's thrown rocks at me in past videos, and uh, I know my place, so I'll just follow along. So the bike that Leah's on now is uh, relatively new to her and she used to ride a small bike with small wheels. Um, as you can tell she's not very big but she's having no problem navigating this stuff and I think that new bike's probably a lot easier to ride over this kind of terrain. So she seems to be enjoying it quite a bit and uh, definitely is moving along at a good clip.
Oh! You got it? So this stuff here has actually got a pretty soft bottom and so the bikes were sinking in quite a bit. I think the left side ended up being a bit better but uh, that bypass to the hard left, not good at all as we find out on the way back although I don't have video of it but Yuko goes through it and sinks pretty deep. I don't know if that's shallower. This one here is just... Did I go around trailing good? Uh, she might need a hand or she's gonna probably just get wet feet I guess. <laughs> Despite all the wet riding I've done in the very slippery conditions I've done it in at different times, I've never fallen over and uh, yeah, lost control. This side. Uh, you know what, that doesn't sound good at all. I've never watered out a bike is what I'm trying to say, and um, I don't really want to. If you can get it up over the bank, the go-around trail looks okay. Anyway, we do get out of here without any dramas, and we get back down without any dramas. No bikes getting flooded out, so it's all good. Just puttering along. I was just puttering along and I was enjoying it. Because you never put time aside to go find a field to practice those slow lock to lock turns and the figure eights and the turn tracks. Though I like those too, I just usually when you head out on a ride, you're going riding and you're just moving along. This kind of trail, like this one here with the roots and the rocks, it's a good playground, and if you go slow, you can pick your way around that playground and practice balance, trail. practice those hard lock turns, practice a little bit of clutch. Now right here, you're going to hear Mark's bike is starting to play up. And, well, Justin also has a hard go right here. Ooh, ooh. It's a rugged, rugged section. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And just as I say Those that... Those handguards are no good. She busted? Mm -hmm. Oop, down goes Leah. I think she bounced over a couple rocks in the front end, banged into one, and over she went. But uh, no damage to her and no damage to the bike, so we're all good. Par parts in trees almost qualify there, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> so Justin broke his handguard, and what we're talking bender. about is whether it's time to deploy the struggle uh, bunny. I don't think... This little spot's getting pretty rough, and I don't remember it being quite like this. There's some good roots and rocks under here, and I bounce my way through, but I get mud on me, and Princess doesn't like mud. Now, to be clear, I'm talking about the bike, not me. We were just talking about the roots, me and Mark, and Mark bounced off one, down he goes, but very soft landing, no problem there. Hugo's going to get through with a little bit of spray and come out with the bike running away on him, and uh, Justin's going to come line. through in fine fashion. And Leah's unfortunately going to get a bit trapped on some of those roots that uh, Justin's on right now. All right, it's now a mud run officially. <laughs> Having extracted all the bikes from that mud hole, we're ready to go again. And uh, this next section here, we start to get into a bit more of the roots. And the roots are a bit challenging, although today the traction's not terrible on them. Here's a little section that I like. Bouncing over these rocks seems to be what this XCW suspension was set up for, and it just kind of lugs and rolls its way on up. And I just noticed kind of this year where it starts to fall on its face a bit is when you pick up the pace. Some of that just might have to do with suspension limitations or, well, probably more likely rider skill limitations. Though to be honest, I'm probably just trying to talk myself into a new bike, but I'm not ready to give this one up just yet, so I bought some new inserts, and I should have some WP6500s to go into those forks shortly. Be a rough little section to go through. I put the wrong tire on for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. 
What you got? D6? I put a 606 on it. It's hard. Too, way too hard. Well, I can certainly empathize with Justin. I'm running a Starcross 6 but right now, and it's the medium soft, which does fairly well, better than I thought it would do. It's the tire that I run for a lot of the hair scrambles, because it does really well there when the speeds are picking up. But the tire that I typically run is the Michelin Medium Enduro, and uh, that works quite well. So like I said, this little section can be a bit intimidating. It's going up a hill, and it's got a couple step-ups on it, that you can clearly see there. And I'm trying to point out some lines that I think are good lines. Uh, but you know what, I'm, I'm not the guy to pick good lines, because I frequently don't. So I don't think about it too often, but having long legs is a real disadvantage. It's uh, You don't build those skills that you need, like balance and good clutch control, because you can always put a leg down. So Leah's just hitting me here with some short leg privilege, and uh, you know what, it stings, it really does. Sadly, it's come to the point where the struggle bunny had to come out. Mark's bike is playing up still, and he's decided to head back to the trucks. Well, at least someone gets to be the struggle bunny. Claim to fame. I haven't made it back yet, so I might take your spot still. Might be a bunny. All right, we'll see you in a few. So we've made our goodbyes to Mark, and he's going to head back to the truck. So you can see some hikers up here, and this trail is multi-use. It was originally opened up by the Jeeps, and then ATVs, and motorbikes, and hikers all use it now. And everyone gets along. The hikers and the motorbikers get along really well if you ask guys like Mike Harvey. Ah, uh, but that's a tale for a different time and a different audience. Did I mention there were roots up here? What does that slang in Australia mean? Right, maybe we'll have to ask Mike and some hikers. What you doing down there? You go. <laughs> Hello. Hey, poppers. Hi. Hi. Now that Hugo's got his last nap in, it's time to push to the very top, and the last obstacle is this big slab of granite. The traction on it is great, it's like sandpaper, so you don't need to do anything dramatic, you just gotta get over the visual of this big steep hill climb, and just track your on up. almost to the top but this being a visual obstacle that will catch a few people out potentially it makes sense to stop and make sure everyone gets up okay because if you loop the bike out or you fall it, it's fairly steep and the surface is quite rough Justin has no problem and actually pulls stuff. a little wheelie on that last part for some dramatic effect and I think Leah stalled it, but she gets going again, doesn't need any help from us, and uh, tractor's on up. Nice. Now you don't need to take this line to the left, it's a lot steeper on the approach, but I like this one and uh, well there's a clear path there, the hikers having stepped over once they saw my intention to go straight. There's a path that goes to the right that's a little easier, this isn't quite the top, we've got one more little climb to do.
and here we go, to the top of Turtle Mountain. Well, let's see what I have for outtakes for the way down. Let's see, I make a bad choice right here because I plan to pop this, but I don't. <laughs> and I donate a little bit of my AXP skid plate to granite, and it does take a bit of a, a bit of a rub there. But you know what? That skid plate's no been on there it. for I don't know since I've had the bike, and it's taken a heap of abuse. I don't think Leah would be insulted if I said she was a novice rider. What I would like to say though is that I'm inspired when I see people that are challenged because they're not really big and the machine kind of dominates them a little bit and they just keep pushing through. There's just no quit and Leah is one of those people so I appreciate the reminder Leah to be inspired and thank you for that. And of course we have Hugo. What I like to say about Hugo is he's never in a bad mood. He can drop his bike a dozen times and he can struggle quite hard and get burned out, but he'll just keep going and he keeps laughing. And I have some good video evidence because yesterday we went to Stanley and he had a welcome to Stanley moment, I'm sure, or several of them, and uh, he just trucked on through. This clip here is actually on our way up, and Mark is still with us, and you can hear his bike. It's fun to pick your that weird off idle really thing over. just got worse <laughs> as time went on, and that's why he went back. I think it's an easy fix, or he seemed really to think it was, <laughs> so I hope it's no drama, and I hope the bike is running good now. Alright, that does bring us to the end of the video, and I want to thank the gang for having me out, and thank you guys for coming along. See you in the next one.